Before we start this video, a large thank you to Hawk, PA Team, Michael, Brian, Kien, Bao, and Liam for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to continue with the archery system. We're going to go ahead and make an aim functionality so we can go into first person and aim. So go over to the player combat manager and come right down to where we actually have our firing projectile logic. And right before we jump into that, we're going to quickly make it so we can just fire the projectile straight ahead of us if we're not aiming. So to do that, we need to create a flag to tell if we are aiming. So let's go over to the player network manager and copy any bool that you have here now and change its name to is aiming. So is aiming is going to be used by the host mostly for themselves to kind of basically switch the camera's rotations and your character's rotations and also toggle a bit of UI. Uh, and switch some settings on the camera. So this just lets us know if we're zoomed in while we're aiming. That's the comment I put there. I did that uh, while pausing the recording, so we saved some time. I'm trying to cut this down a little bit so we're not here for too long. Uh, now, over here, we have fire and arrow based on one of three variations. First, we need to check for if we are aiming. Otherwise, we do one of the other two. So if we're aiming, we're using the camera to determine where we're firing the arrow. And if we're not aiming, we're going to check to see if we are locked on. And if we are locked on, the arrow fires at the lock target. If we are not locked on, the arrow fires right now wherever we're facing. In the future, we'll change the direction of the forward-facing arrow, uh, depending on if we're looking up or down via the camera's rotation. So basically, we'll tilt the arrow up or down to have it match the camera's direction. So for now, though, let's not worry about that. Let's just make the arrow go straight if we are not locked onto a target. And we're going to make two comments here, one for aiming, and then one for not aiming while you are locked, and one for not aiming while you are unlocked. So Temporarily, we're going to make the unlocked arrow just face the forward-facing direction of the player. Like I said, in the future, this will change, so we'll match the arrows up and downward direction, depending on if, how much you tilt the camera up and down. It's quite easy to do, too, and also sync online. We'll go over that when we add the aiming and tilting. Uh, when you tilt up your camera, you change the player in the future. So right now, it just kind of shoots forward. Right now, there's no um, sticking in the environment, thing, but it works. So we can fire locked and unlocked. So let's go ahead now and begin the functionality for our aiming. So we're going to go into first person for aiming like Elden Ring and we're going to have a UI toggle and we're going to change a few things about the camera. So make a header and then make a transform on the player camera for the, we can call this ranged, we can call it target transform when aiming or range transform, range follow transform, follow transform when aiming. I'm going to call it follow transform when aiming. Whatever is clear to you, but this is the transform that the camera will follow instead of the player while you are aiming. So go down to your handle follow target functionality and do a check to see if the player is aiming. And if we are aiming, we're going to simply follow this instead of following the player's transform. So it's pretty simple. Just copy what you got here in code and replace the player transform dot position with this new follow transform when aiming dot position. Okay, let's save that. And now, obviously, we have no way to get this right now, so we're going to just run some tests in the scene by manually placing it in the variable. Go to your player, your prefab, and create a new empty game object anywhere under as a child of the player object. I'm just going to call mine the same thing I call that variable or something close to it. So empty game object, ranged camera follow transform. Uh, actually, aim, there we go, aim camera follow transform. That looks good, save that, jump out of the game, or back into the game rather, and start it up. Now go to the variable on your camera and search it from the scene if you have to, and just put it in here so you can see it's actually under the player. Go to the player and toggle the is aiming bool. Nothing will happen obviously yet. But now if we zoom this in here, you can see at about three on the Z axis, just about, that's where I wanna be. So this is just about where it'll be first person. So copy that component or just remember the number three and then go back to your player prefab and paste the component values or just insert three on the Z axis uh, for its position. Now, if you have a different model than me, obviously this number could be a little bit different, so it might not be exactly the same. That's all right, just wherever you need it to be. Save that. Now, come back over into the player camera and what we're gonna do is we need to also handle the rotations differently because it can't work the same um, as it does normally for aiming. So make a new function called handle standard rotations and then we're going to copy the old logic inside this function called handle standard rotations. So this is all the old rotation logic for the camera that is not changing at all. Now under the handle rotations functionality, we're going to do a check if the player is aiming dot value, do one thing, otherwise handle the old standard rotations. So now let's make a new private void for handle aimed rotations or aim rotations. And this is just going to be what's ran as the logic while we are aiming. 
So we used a combination of the main camera object and the pivot transform before to manipulate the camera. It's a bit different because now we're in first person. We need to actually manipulate the camera object itself. So I've typed out the code here to save some time and go through it. If you're not grounded, switch is aiming a false, and then you can just kind of return. If you're performing action, you can also return. Now, we're going to get the camera Y and X rotation uh, and start it off at zero. This is a vector three. So we're going to say left and right and then up and down. We're going to get the values the exact same way as the other rotations. So we're going to get them from our inputs. So we can see here we're comparing them to our vertical input and our horizontal input. And then we're capping our up and down look angle. And then we're just assigning camera rotation dot Y to each and then camera rotation dot X to the other one. And we're setting the camera object transform dot local Euler angles. And then we're setting the X and Y. That's important. It has to be local Euler angles. Now, if you go into is aiming, you can see if I go back to the game here now and go down to my main camera, if I were to rotate the X on the camera object, I have to pause the game because it's overriding it. You can see here I'm going to go up and down. And if I were to do the Y, I go left and right. But we have a problem. If I get out of this here, you can see here the rotation will kind of mess up. This is because when we enter the aim state, we need to go ahead and actually make sure we're resetting the local rotation of our main object and our pivot object. So make this on the player network manager right here, make an on is aiming changed and make sure you're saying if we're not aiming, you want to basically reset the local Euler angles of the camera object from when we were aiming to zero, zero, zero. So it doesn't mess up our non aiming camera rotations and then call that on our on network spawn. So we can do that by jumping over here down to the player manager, going to on network spawn and then coming down here and just wherever you want, do it inside if is owner because right now as it stands in the series everything inside when is aiming is changing is only going to need to be ran on the owner side uh, not anybody else's because it's all things to do with the camera and the ui um, i'm trying something out different this video guys i'm just kind of making the code snippets ahead of time too and putting them on the screen just to save a little bit of time if you prefer for me to write them all out all the time and, and not do that sometimes that's okay too just let me know in the comments so on network despawn, make sure you unsubscribe from this again. Uh, save that now and go back to the game. If I go to aiming, you can see, well, it's still kind of messed up. And that's because if I tilt the camera before I go into the aiming state, I'm actually changing the rotation of our camera pivot and our main object. So you can see here if I zero these out, so this is the main object, zero, and then tilt or zero out the uh, pivot, it's fine again. So likewise, we need to go back on this on is aiming changed and make a setting for when it's uh, also enabled. We're not only resetting the local Euler angles of the camera object when it's disabled, but when it's enabled, we're resetting the local Euler angles of the pivot transform and the Euler angles of the main camera object transform. So I'm going to get rid of that if is owner check in here because we're only calling that on uh, if we are the owner on on network spawn. We're only subscribing this event then. So yeah, if we are not aiming, reset the local Euler angles of our camera object to zero zero zero. And if we are aiming, Reset the local Euler angles of both the main camera game object and the camera pivot object, which I need to make public right here. It's called camera, camera pivot transform. Um, save that and then do the same thing here. And there we go. Because basically these rotations, when we switch from aiming to non-aiming, like third person to first person, um, they're going to kind of mess each other up if they're not reset. So if I go back to the game here now and I toggle the aiming, you can see I am in first person now. It's all good. If I untoggle it after looking up or down, the rotation is not broken in third person. And likewise, by going to third person, look up or down, it's not broken in first person. So it is working now as intended, but we still have no real way uh, to get in there. We're going to do that by making a weapon action in a moment. I also dragged in this UI asset here. I'm going to make a UI, um, a crosshair on the, the UI. So we're going to go to my HUD manager and make an image in the center of the screen. Very important. It has to be dead center. I believe I got this UI asset from uh, Kenny Assets, I think it's called, by the way. It's like free UI. If you Google that, you can find it. I can probably link in the description too. Um, I think this is where this is from anyway, but yeah, just make sure you have the cross air points where you want the arrow to be fired when it's aimed right in the dead center of the screen. That is very important for what comes next uh, in the next video. So disable that by default, go to your HUD manager, whatever manages everything on your heads up display and make a variable. You can have it be the image or the game object. Um, if it's going to be the image, you're going to use enable and disable. If it's the game object, you're going to use set active true and false. I'm going to use the game object. If you don't want to make it public also, you can make it serializable and set up a function here to toggle it. I don't really care, so I'm going to make a public. I'm going to go over to the player network manager now, and I'm going to, when we're not aiming, going to go to player UI manager .instance .hud manager, and I'm going to disable that crosshair by saying crosshair.setActive false. Otherwise, if I am aiming, I'm going to set that crosshair to true, doing the same thing, setting the status to true. Now I'm going to save that, jump in the game real fast, make sure it works, uh, drag in my crosshair to my HUD manager as a variable there, save that, go into the project, and there we go. I probably should make it less transparent, but yeah, that looks that looks good. It's working. Center of the screen. 
All right, what's next? Let's go ahead and make the weapon item action that allows us to aim. So go and create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call mine aim action straightforward. I'm going to delete start and update functionality, drop in my namespace as is per tradition. I'm going to make this derive from, I believe it's called weapon item action. And then we're going to override the default uh, functionality and put in our own. So the first thing I'm going to do here real fast off camera is I'm going to snap some uh, return events. So if any of these things um, stop us from aiming, we're just going to not get to the part where we toggle our is aiming to true. So for example, if we're not grounded, return, do not continue. You should not be able to aim if you're not grounded. I'm going to do the same thing if we're jumping, if we're rolling, or if we're locked on, come back. We do not want to proceed if we're any of these things. Otherwise, we're going to make it to the last bit of functionality. Now, if we are the owner, we're going to make it so we're going to two-hand our weapon if we're not doing that already, because bows can't be fired unless they're two-handed, and this is going to be for the bow. And this aim action will only be on bow objects as the left bumper action, so you don't have to worry about this being on like a sword action and two-handing your sword for no reason, because this is only going to be placed on an object that can fire a projectile. All right, after that, we're just going to simply say player network, or sorry, player performing action dot player network manager is aiming dot value is set to true. We can save that. Now, at this point, the is aiming status will never go to false, which we don't want. Uh, let's create an asset menu first though. Character as actions, weapon actions, aim action. I just yoinked this from the other uh, weapon item action. Now I'm gonna go to the assets data uh, weapon actions and I'm gonna create that. If you are using um, actions with server RPCs, then you want to put this in your weapon action manager now and give it its own unique ID. So I'm not using that, but I'm going to do it anyway just to show you if you were. So world action manager right here, you want to make sure you add it to this list here. But you don't need to if you're doing the tutorial exactly how I am. Don't feel like you have to. I just did it to show you. Go over to the bow now and then go to your one-handed left bumper action uh, and then go ahead and add your aim action. All right, now right under the player input manager, we're gonna make one right under is blocking false by canceling LB, do the same thing. So player controls, player actions, LB canceled is equated to is aiming is now equal to false. Then go down to your handle left bumper input. You can see we have a comment from ages ago. If we're two handing the weapon, use the two handed action. We didn't have two handed uh, implemented when we had this in the past. So we're gonna check if player dot player network manager is two handing right weapon. We're gonna use the right weapons O one handed left bumper action. Otherwise, it's always the left weapon. Why is this? Because if you're using the left bumper, it's trying to look for the weapon in your left hand, unless you're two-handing a weapon. So it's going to be your right weapon if you're two-handing the right weapon. Otherwise, every other time, it is your left weapon. All right, cool. Now we can save that, and that should be good. We should be able to use that in the bow here now, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back over to my player camera, because I forgot about one thing. We never actually get this variable for the follow transform. You could put it on your player combat manager, like up here somewhere, and then you could get it in your prefab and then kind of fetch it from there. I don't like doing that because it does feel like it should be on the camera, so I'm going to keep it on the camera, but I'm just going to basically make it private and create a getter script for it. So I'll show you what I mean. Go to player, go to the prefab, go down to your transform. I'm going to create a new script called player aim camera follow transform. Like so, I'm gonna open up the script, delete, start, and update functionality as is per tradition. Drop in my namespace, and that's it. We that's all we need. I'll leave a comment here just so it's clear. This script is just used to fetch the transform of this of this object. So we can save that now and go back to player camera, and then go down to where we have handle our follow target. And if we're aiming, we're just gonna do a check first. We're gonna say if the follow transform is null. We're going to attempt to get it from the player by getting a component in children, and then we can just simply return. Um, if you don't want to do this, that's okay too, because in the event that it's basically null and definitely, this will continually try to get it, but that should never be the case. So you should never have this so it is uh, not working. You know, if you go into the game and you aim and it doesn't follow this transform, something's up, you should come back here and revisit this. Um, so you could just put it in the player comment manager if you want and fetch it from there as a variable. It's entirely to you. I like doing it this way because I like keeping it on the player camera. All right, now we can save that, jump back in the game, now we can aim and there we go cool working as intended looking pretty good pretty good all right so what's next well we're not rotating right now we can see our hands in the bow so that's a little bit awkward so what we're going to do is first remedy that rotation so we're going to rotate the character towards whatever direction we we're looking at while we're aiming so go to handle rotation and just like we did in the camera make a new private void called handle standard rotation or handle standard rotations whatever you prefer and then paste all of the old rotation logic into that functionality. So everything in here, like so, copy, and then paste it in there. You can keep these two checks here if you want to. Um, the is dead and can rotate return because they apply to both. So I will keep them both there. 
Next, we could say if the player dot player network manager is aiming dot value, do this. Otherwise, do the old handle standard rotation. So if statement and then the else is going to have our old functionality and make a new private void for handle aimed rotations. And we can actually yoink the logic here from this bit right here. So I'm going to copy everything here from these lines and then to make a new private void handle aim rotation. And what we're going to do is just make the character face the same direction as the camera's forward facing direction. So call handle aim rotations here and change this target direction to player camera dot instance dot camera object dot transfer dot forward. So basically target direction is equal to the camera object transfer dot forward, your target direction dot y is zero, then normalize it, and then just basically make your character rotate towards that direction. You can see here, here's the scene view and I'm turning around and the player is facing the right direction. Now, if you have pivot animations, you can make those play instead if you want to add a little bit more polish, but I honestly don't mind this. Um, this is fine to me. All right, so one more thing. If I were to go to the arrows now, drop these in and load the bow, just check it, watch, watch what happens when I try to kind of get closer here. So I'm just gonna load the arrow and then aim again. And as I turn around, you can see, I can see the bow and the hand and it's just not that nice. You only wanna see, you know, the cross arrow when you're in this vision. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust two things in the camera. We're going to adjust the field of view and the clipping plane. So you can see here, if I'm in the camera, the near clipping plane is 0 0.3 right now by default, I believe. I've said it's like 1.3 or even higher than one, anything at all. You can see as 1.5, for example, I can't see the floor anymore. It basically makes stuff clip out if it's too close to the camera. So 1.3 is the Goldilocks zone here, but also we want to change the field of view to like 40 and that'll give you a nice look. So now if I zoom in, you can see it looks like we're a bit zoomed in and everything from the player is out of view. Cool. So how do we get that to toggle back and forth? Very simple. Go to your player network manager, go to on is aiming changed. And then all we got to do here is basically edit the near clipping plane and the field of view on the camera. So if we're not aiming, the field of view is going to be 60 and the clipping plane is going to be 0.3 is the default if you didn't change it unless you've changed it at some point in your project in which case make it whatever you change it to um, and if you are aiming the field of view is 40 and your clipping plane is going to be 1.3 and that's it and that should now work so we're going to go back and test out real fast just to make sure so 1.3 0.3 save that jump back in the project aim and I can no longer see my hands of the bow or my feet, but I can still see zoomed in and the floor does not clip. All right, guys, there you go. Working as intended. So in the next episode, we're going to make it so wherever I'm aiming this bow in the aimed vision, we're going to fire an arrow. We're going to sync the arrow fired this way on the network and the arrow fired when we're locked on to a target on the network and the arrow that is fired while you're not locked on and free aiming on the network. And then we're going to test that. And we're going to make it so we can actually have the arrows also penetrate the environment or the characters they hit. Thank you very much for joining me once again. I hope you all have a very lovely weekend. A special thank you to my patrons. You all have my sincerest gratitude. I will see you guys in the next one.